everybody, it's Brian here. So great to have you. Welcome to our lesson about positive and negative integers. Now our goals for this lesson are twofold. One, we're gonna compare and order positive and negative numbers using a number line. And then we're also gonna use zero as a guide when finding differences between positive and negative numbers. So key vocabulary, what are positive numbers? Well, those are any fraction, decimal, or whole numbers that are larger than zero. And if we have negative numbers, those are any fractions, decimals, or whole numbers that are less than zero. So a lot of these are going to use zero as a guide to help us between the distinction between positive and negative numbers. So if we look at our number line, we always start with zero as our anchor. Positive numbers, these are numbers that you're used to, so we just count like normal. One, two, three, four, five. And for the sake of a lot of these examples, we're just going to stick to whole numbers, but it's the same idea with fractions and with decimals as well. So again, we start from zero, and as we start to count away from zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So when we have this number line, as you see, as we go to the left, numbers get smaller. And as you continue going to the right, your numbers will get larger. This allows us to see the differences visually. So one, if we have numbers show their distance from zero. So if we look, we're at the number two. Number two is actually two spaces from zero. And if we look at number negative five, Negative five is a negative five spaces away from zero. Two, zero itself is just a neutral number. It is not, it is neither positive nor negative. So not a number that you really have to think about in terms of anything other than it is an anchor to keep in your mind of how to get to zero, how to get away from zero. Three, the further a negative number is from zero, the smaller that negative number. So for example, if we looked at negative four and negative two, a lot of the most common mistake is that someone sees the number four, thinks that four is larger than two, but forgets that it's negative four and negative two. So they would assume that negative four is actually larger when in fact negative four is further to the left on the number line, which makes it smaller than negative two. So on the flip side, negative two is actually greater than negative four. You could have also said that negative four is smaller than or less than negative two. On the flip side, the further a positive number is from zero, the larger it is. So these are numbers that we're used to. So if we looked at the number one and we looked at the number five, we know that five is greater than one. The further to the right, the larger the number. The further to the left, the smaller the number. So we can also use real life examples such as debt, temperature, or above below ground. These may help you visualize positive and negative numbers. So you see that the number line is actually flipped on the side, but this is something like you would see on a thermometer or if you were going to do sea level or distance from the ground for height. As we go up, you can see that the numbers increase and as you go down, the numbers decrease. Again, these visuals, these mental images may help you that when you're taking questions, when you're thinking about negative or positive numbers, to th have some sort of image in your mind to help guide you as to what to do or where to go. Same thing, you also may see it with sea level. Sea level just means that it's at zero feet above sea level, anything above or below, positive or negative. All right, let's get into some sample questions. Sample question one, compare negative four and negative nine using less than, greater than, or equal to, and a number line. So luckily we have this number line already set up for us. The first thing we're gonna do are find these two numbers on that number line. I find negative four, I find negative nine. I see that negative nine is further to the left, negative four is further to the right, which means that negative four is greater than negative nine, which we have as the first symbol, negative four is greater than negative nine. On the other side, you could have also said negative nine is less than negative four. Both of those would work. Both of those are correct. Now, negative nine is less than negative four because it is also more spaces away from zero. All right, let's look at sample question number two. It says, order the following from least to greatest, 12, negative six, two, four, and negative 10. Now, the most common mistake is that someone is just going to write two, four, negative six, negative 10, 12, 
because they're looking at just the whole number parts and forgetting the negative signs and how the negative signs generally mean opposite. So instead of being 12 spaces, 10 spaces to the right of zero, it is now 10 spaces to the left of zero, making it that negative. Set up a number line. We then just go straight through. I find 12, negative 6, 2, 4, negative 10. I now see that going from left to right, it is least to greatest. So negative 10, negative 6, 2, 4, and 12. All right. Now, these are more questions that you're more, most likely going to see in type of word problems. So Jesse is 52 meters below sea level. Kim is 117 meters above sea level. What is the distance between the two friends? Now, one of the suggestions that I can make for you is that you set up a number line going above and below because that's how height or sea level works but you use zero as your anchor. So you set something up, you set where zero is going to be, and then you set your markers. We know that Jesse is 52 meters below sea level, or negative 52. We know that Kim is 117 meters above sea level, so that has to be above zero, and then we start to find the distance between the two friends. Now we know from Jesse to sea level is 52 meters, and then once, so Jesse, imagine, has to swim up 52 meters to even get to sea level, and then would have to continue another 117 meters to even get to Kim. So to find the total distance, we end up having to put those two numbers together. So 52 plus 117 will give us 169 meters. So the distance between these two are 169 meters. Next question. On Monday, it was negative four degrees Celsius. On Tuesday, it was negative 9 degrees Celsius. Which statement best describes what occurred? So even if we look here, we have our four options, but to draw it out to see some sort of mental image of what's happening using zero is helpful. So we set up zero degrees. I find negative 4, and I find negative 9. So as we can see, it went from negative 4 down to negative 9. And we know that if a number goes down, the answer, the temperature actually dropped, which means that we could knock off two answer choices right away. C, because it said the temperature rose 13 degrees. We know that's not true. And we know the temperature did not rise at all, so it can't be A. So now we're left between B, which is 5, or D and 13. Now, if you look, some of you may say, I'm going to just add 4 and 9 together, and I'm going to get 13. But if you start at negative 4, and you continue down, you have to go negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9. You are traveling five spaces. So that way, the only one that works is that the temperature dropped 5 degrees because it is five spaces between negative 4 and negative 9. On Friday, the thermometer read 10 degrees Celsius. On Saturday, the thermometer read negative 2 degrees Celsius. Which of the following statements best describes the change in temperature? Again, very similar, setting up something visual, that number line, that thermometer idea is already set up for you. So let's put our numbers on there. Again, we start with zero. That is our anchor number to help us determine distance. 10 degrees above, positive 10 degrees Celsius, negative 2 degrees Celsius. So let's check our distance between the two. Now we know again that the temperature dropped. It started at 10 and has to go to negative two. So to get from 10 degrees Celsius to zero is 10 degrees. And once we're at zero to get to negative two, we have to travel another two degrees Celsius. So the total temperature drop is going to then be our 12 degrees Celsius. Again, we know it dropped, immediately knocked off A and C, the distance was between B and D. So a correct answer would be B. That's all from this end. It's your time to go practice. See you soon.